Okay, this video is to address a qu common question that I get when using a CPX API system with a Rockwell PLC and using an IO link master module. The question is, I have a machine that may or may not have an IO link device connected to uh, my CPX API for IOL here. And I want to be able to enable and disable the port through uh, Rockwell based on which configuration I have on my current machine. And I want it to stay in the machine uh, permanently. So to do that, what we're going to do is here, you can see I'm online with the CPX API system. Um, I've gone through and set up uh, any of the parameters through the web server here before I do the export to Rockwell. So for example, in my 4IO link module, you can see on my uh, port zero, I've turned it to auto start. Um, and you also see that I do not have a device connected. So if I look down here at the port status, there's no device connected. Uh, so I'm getting an error on there right now. And let's just say I, this is my standard configuration, but on the, this current machine I'm connected to, I don't actually have a device on that port. Um, so what I've done is I've gone to the Ethernet IP Rockwell L5X project and I export uh, the standard configuration here, but I, I have this configuration assembly checked. Um, this is important. So what this does is it gives you all the parameters that you set up in the web server here in the configuration tags of your Ethernet IP object in Rockwell. And every time the Rockwell PLC connects to this system, it's pushing these parameters. So when I export, it knows that port mode zero is set to auto start, all the others are deactivated, and every time the PLC connects, it's pushing this configuration. So I need to be able to change this port mode in those configuration tags. So <clears throat> I have the export open here, and I'm connected to my PLC. Uh, I haven't done anything to this other than just the export. So you'll see I have my main routine and it has my standard UDTs. Um, the area we want to look is in the controller tags here. So my uh, Ethernet module is this one here, right? My API EP, this was the export. So if I look in my controller tags, I can see I have configuration tags. There's 400 cents here. Um, and if we were in edit right now, let's move over to monitor. And if I expand the descriptions here, you can see it'll give you descriptions for each configuration tag. And so where I want to go is down to module five, which you can see is my four IOL module. And you can see there's module code, parameter length, uh, device ID, <clears throat> all of this stuff, right? Get down here and sorry this is not moving over for me probably because i'm up against the window expand that over um so you can see for each port there's vendor id cycle time and then here um these ones are unlabeled but you'll see that these are actually the port modes here so starting at 89 and working down to 92, and this will be different depending, these locations will be different. You need to look for your actual module and just the four uh, cents below nominal cycle time, those will be the port modes for your IO link master. So you can see the first one is set to a value of two, the other three are set to zero. Um, and if you look in the manual, which I can drag over here, for the IO link master and you go to parameterization um, in here, right here, port mode. So this is the parameter that is saved in the configuration data. So zero is deactivated, two is IO link auto start, which is what we have right now. So what I can do is, remember the, this data is pushed to the CPX API every time it connects. So if I change this, to zero, right, we're still connected. So nothing's gonna happen immediately. And if I go to the web server, I'll reload this just to make sure we still have no device connected. It takes a second for the red X to pop up there. There it is. 
if I look, I still have it set as IO link auto start, right? So now what we need to do is reestablish the connection here. Uh, the way we do this is the same way that we can uh, clear errors on the system. So I'm just going to go in here and what we need to do is inhibit the connection and then reestablish it. There's a way to do that with uh, set system variables in Rockwell. So I'm going to add a new rung here and I'm going to insert an SSV, which is set system value. Let's make this a module value. And I'm going to select my API EP node. The attribute name I want is mode. So this is changing the mode of that module. And the source here I need a tag for. So let's just call it API EP mode. And I'll create a new tag for that. It looks like it's a dint. So we'll leave it as that. So now I need to, um, well, let's see what I actually need to uh, do here. So I just hit F1 on that uh, SSV block to bring up the help. And if I scroll down, I can see what my GSV SSV objects are. I'll click on that. We're in module here. And we are looking at the mode. So <clears throat> uh, each bit has a specific meaning, it says. So zero, uh, if set causes a major fault to be generated, if any of the module, blah, blah, blah. Uh, if bit two is set, causes the module uh, to enter an inhibited state uh, after shutting down all the connections to the module. So that's what we want. We want need to shut, inhibit the module and then reestablish it. So we need to flip bit two on. So let's go ahead and uh, we want to actually set bit two to on. And then I need to have a tag here to toggle this. So let's just say disable comms and I'll create a Boolean for that. And then I just want to one shot this SSV. So I'm actually going to <clears throat> move it down here and uh, create a one shot tag. I'm going to make this a dint because I'll actually probably need two here. So reference bit one in there, make this a one shot. And then the other thing I want to do is if it's not on, I want to, this bit will turn off, right? And then I can just write this SSV again. So API, this should be zero uh, when this dis disable comms goes. I think that's all we need here. Oh, I want to put another one shot here. I don't want this to run all the time. So I'll do that. Make that two. Finalize and okay. So now we need to disable comms. You can see I toggled that. And if I look over here, I click on this module, you can see the status is inhibited. And I see red lights on my API EP module right now. Now I'm going to reestablish comms by toggling back off. You can see it went back to running here. Uh, let's look in our web server again. So I'll reload this. Uh, you can see I don't have an error now, but it's not because I connected an IO link device. It's because I changed the port mode. So you can see it's deactivated now. Just to make sure that's really works. Let's go back to controller tags and we change this one here. Why don't we just try to enable all four. And obviously you could put these tags in your code if you wanted to, right? And then let's go disable comms again. We're inhibited. Reestablish comms. We're running. Now I'm going to reload this page, reload it again, and you can see we have no device. I expand this and they're all set to auto start and they're all no devices. So we have errors on all four ports and I can see all four ports are flashing right now. So that's how you uh, enable and disable ports, uh, IO link ports on the CPX API system. I uh, hope this helps.